What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another day of Sopranos Timber. Today we are looking at the 12th episode of Season 6. It is the mid-season finale, Kaisha. And even though this is the mid-season finale, um, I just wanted to take the opportunity here to thank you guys for continuing to watch these episodes. I hope you guys are enjoying Sopranos Timber so far, and I cannot wait to wrap up Season 6B with you guys soon. Uh, so thank you so much, and let's jump into the episode. This episode opens with a dedication to John Patterson. He was one of the directors for many of the episodes on the show. He directed every season finale except for season six because he unfortunately passed away after the fifth season. And it's a nice touch that they would honor him in this way at the beginning of this episode. Tony finalizes the documents officially selling the chicken store to Jamba Juice, and while he's there, uh, he talks to Juliana. Uh, he wants another chance to continue to see her, but she refuses. She's pissed at him after their last meeting for just abruptly leaving her, and she doesn't want anything to do with him after this. Uh, we also learn that she's started seeing Christopher. They're in a relationship together now. She's his new side piece, um, and he's really unhappy with his marriage to Kelly, um, and he wants to be with Juliana. He likes her a lot more. They met at an AA meeting, uh, so Christopher feels like she understands him more than his wife does. Uh, but Murmur warns him that their relationship could be dangerous um, to his sobriety. If she makes a mistake, it could lead to him relapsing as well. Uh, meanwhile, little Carmine arranges a meeting between Phil and Tony. After all the business with the wire room and Vito and Fat Dom Gamiello, um, he urges them to settle their differences for the sake of the business. They have a lot more money to earn together rather than fighting each other. Now they agree to settle their differences, uh, but little Carmine accidentally makes a reference to Phil's brother. This sets Phil off, he gets all pissed off, and the agreement is cancelled. Now I did a whole video talking about little Carmine and his motivations, and some people think that he intentionally messed up this meeting because he wanted to create conflict between Phil and Tony. I explored that in that video, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, meanwhile, Carmela is still worried about Adriana. Last episode, she had a dream about Adriana in Paris, which made her realize that Adriana is either dead or in trouble. And she suggested Tony that they hire a private investigator to track her down and find out what happened to her. Now, Tony, of course, doesn't want to do this because he doesn't want Carmela knowing anything about Adriana's death. So he gets Syl to finally clear things up with the building inspector because he wants Carmela distracted with that rather than looking into Adriana. And with her spec house project back on, Carmela forgets completely about Adriana. She just focuses on building the house. So we can see where her priorities really lie. Uh, meanwhile, AJ meets a girl at his job, Blanca. She's uh, the HR worker at the construction site. And she's 10 years older than him, and she has a son from another man. However, they end up going out, and AJ really starts to like her. And while they're having a date at her place, some kids are outside being noisy, uh, playing rap music, and disturbing her baby. So AJ goes down to talk to them, but rather than fight them or anything like that, he bribes them with a bike to get them to go away. It's kind of a bitch move. Um, but they end up leaving, and Blanca is so impressed with him handling the situation, uh, they end up having sex. And AJ really starts to fall for this girl. Uh, meanwhile, Christopher worries what Tony will think of him seeing Juliana. He's worried that Tony will uh, be angry at him for seeing a woman that he was interested in. So he lies to Tony and says that he's dating a black girl named Kaisha. You'll remember that this is the name of the girl that the uh, hitman that he hired to kill Carmine Sr. was seeing. Uh, so he probably got the name from that guy. But later on, Tony sees him talking with her, and later Chris admits to uh, seeing Juliana. Now, Tony says that he doesn't care, but later on at his therapy session with Melfi, he does admit that it bothers him that uh, he, she's no longer on the table, and now Christopher has taken what he thinks is his. Eventually, Christopher and Juliana do end up relapsing together, and they start using together, enabling each other and uh, letting themselves get back on drugs. 
They talk about going to rehab, but it's clear that their relationship is kind of fizzling out. And we're seeing that they're not going to be together, even though they had these strong feelings for each other earlier. Uh, Meanwhile, Phil has a heart attack and winds up in the hospital. Tony goes to visit him there, and they have this heart-to-heart. Tony talks about his experience with death and how he came out of it a different person, and they agree to settle their differences and work together. Um, So we're seeing a tentative peace fall between New York and New Jersey in this episode. And in the final uh, scene here, the Soprano family gathers together around the house to celebrate Christmas. Uh, The only one who's not there is Meadow, who went to California to uh, be with Finn. But AJ brings Blanca and her son, and they welcome her, but the parents aren't really happy about him dating her. She's so much older, she has a kid, and she's much different from their culture. But they gather together um, in the room and, um, you know, have this family moment. And while it seems warm on first glance, there is kind of this awkwardness and tension in the air. Um, It's much different than we saw in season one, which is a warm family moment. In here, we can see that, you know, the relationship between all these people have been strained by, you know, the mafia, materialism, all of that. And their family is kind of shallow now. Um, It doesn't have the warmth and love that it once had. Um, So even though this is kind of the piece before the storm of season 6B, um, we are seeing a general decline from the Soprano family. But that is the mid-season finale. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot wait to continue to review uh, the rest of the season with you guys. And stay tuned for the next Soprano log coming tomorrow. On the twelfth day of Sopranos timbre, my Gumar gave to me twelve AJ's drumming, eleven emerald pipers, ten little lord fuck pants, nine fishy ladies, eight maids a cleaning, seven ducks pool swimming, six seasons long, five onion rings. Four calling cards, three French whores, two Tonys. And a Sopranos prequel movie. Oh my god, that was cringe. Special thank you to my patrons Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan. Clean, John Reyna, Lance Klump, Jesse Sterling, Andrew Stewart, James, Conchalk Chofel, Ops Gracie Media, Daz J. Kit, William Lanson, and Conan Higgins.